Hello again, everyone, and welcome back. I cannot believe we are up to episode number 14 in this series. When I started, I had no idea. And the punch list that I referred to last time, oh, I'm not going to read it this time. We've still got a list of things to do. But first, I wanted to show you what uh, you've already ended up with. One of these stacks or the other. You've either got an S XPS stack or an EPS stack. And it's starting to look like there might be, these aren't even close to lined up. They're just, I just piled them up here as I cut them out. Uh, but it might be looking like a zero hiding in there somewhere. Well, we're going to find out. Now, I want, to, I want to mention one thing before we get started on uh, bonding and uh, adhesives. One of the really nice things about this technique is now you have done a lot of the work already just in making these templates. Cutting out each of these segments, that's not hard. Get you a little plastic bag, mark on it what it is. I've got 36 inch zero EPS templates. Drop them in there, and now you've got an airplane in a bag. If you want, to, if you have, like I do from time to time, a <coughs> crash, knocking out another one of these things is very quick. Now, I know that all of you that have listened to me this far uh, and hear me use the word quick are, again, probably laughing your asses off. But, believe it or not, once you... Uh, get used to this technique, moving from here forward is very, very fast. Actually, moving to here is very fast. Usually it takes about, oh, an hour, hour and a half to do to develop the templates in software. Uh, it takes a bit to cut them out and either paste them on poster board or print them on poster board. That takes a little while, another hour, hour and a half maybe. Then cutting these things out and um, once you have the uh, uh, blocks ready to go, that doesn't take long. And it didn't take me very long to do these, although I even had to do two of them. But now we've got the templates. If we ever have to recreate this model airplane, it's right there in that plastic bag. Okay, enough talking. I'm going to get into uh, some discussions now about adhesives and how to apply them to these things because not only are the adhesives important, and, but there are several of them. How you apply them is important, too, in order to ease your workload down the line because you don't want to get glue out here on the outside where you're going to be sanding because glue does not sand at the same rate that foam does. So we'll talk about that and, uh, and get to it right now. Okay, back again, and this segment is going to be short because I'm only going to talk about three adhesives. And the reason for that is these three are available no matter where you are in the world. You should be able to get at least one of these three adhesives. Uh, they're universal. Also, I'm only going to talk about these three because these three I've used extensively and I know they work. So are there other adhesives that will work? Oh, I imagine, I imagine so. Uh, have I tried them? No, because I know these three work and I'm sticking with what works. The first one, regular old tight bond original formula, not tight bond two, tight bond three, or tight bond 56. The old original, this is the old standby. Uh, the reason why um, I like the original over the other versions, and I've tried the other versions, is that this hot wire cuts better. And when we get to the point where we need to cut out hatches and we need to cut out wing saddles, we need to cut out stab seats, we're going to have to hot wire through the bonding line that we glue these things together with. Next, and what has become my favorite, is called you who I guess that's how you pronounce it, POR, P-O-R, and I'll get this up here so maybe the camera can focus on it. You who 
P-O-R, P-O-R. Uh, this has become my favorite, but there's a caution. This stuff does not sand. If you get a little bit of, of tight bond out in the seam, it, you can sand it. Not good, but you can sand it. If this stuff gets out into the seam, out on the outside edge, it does not sand. You have to dig it out with a knife, but I still like it. Uh, the reason being is that this is both a contact cement and a curing cement. Uh, it's of course foam safe, but if you put it on two pieces and let it dry, when you bring them together it's stuck. Now that's not a good thing in what we're going to do. We want to apply it uh, and assemble while it's wet so that you can take these segments and dial in these little marks. Remember all the marks that I told you to put on here? You got to get those all lined up when you're bonding this thing together. What we do is bond a pair, set it aside, bond another pair, set it aside, bond another pair, and then bond the pairs together. But this stuff works really well. I like it. Last is a, a fairly new adhesive by Titebond, and it's called Titebond Translucent Wood Glue. And I really like this stuff. This is this is good stuff here. Let me get this up here. Here we go. Titebond Translucent. And the reason why I like it is it has a very fast tack time. Um, it tacks faster than type on original. Uh, it's almost like using you who pour. It tacks very fast. You just have to be careful not to use a whole bunch of it because of the three glues, it hot wire cuts the poorest. Does it still hot wire cut? Of course it does. That's why I use it. But it does not cut as readily as the other two glues that I've shown you. Okay, so those are the three adhesives. And uh, I'll try to show, I might, you know, do a Franken-plane here and use a little of this, a little of that, and a little of this just to show how it's done. But uh, next up, I'm going to take one of these sections off and show you where to put the glue. Okay, everyone, uh, back once more for another quick segment on how to bond these things together. It's, it's simple. Um, for this illustration, I was going to use uh, some Yoohoo Pour and maybe some of the other stuff. <clears throat> However, I couldn't find a way to make it where you could see a clear glue on white foam. So what I did was I took some regular Tight Bond Original that we've already talked about, Tight Bond Original Formula. And I put a few drops of uh, dye in an ink. What the dye was uh, black ink from my desktop printer. So I put a few drops of that in it and that made it oh, sort of a uh, dead gray. But anyway, what I'm hoping is that you'll be able to see this when I put it on. Now, the, the very last, as I said, the way I do it is I do it in pairs. I'll do a pair of segments then set it aside to dry. Do another pair of segments, set it aside to dry, another pair, etc. on down the, down the road. In order for this to show up on, uh, I'll start with these center segments because you can see them. The thing to do, and I'll, I'll try to illustrate this as best I can, a little acid brush is the perfect way to apply adhesive. <clears throat> but keep in mind that the strength of this fuselage does not depend on you know how you bond these together. Of course you've got to get them together firmly so that they don't fall apart. But the strength is going to come later with the shell. Um, it's going to be a semi-monocoque construction anyway with either fiberglass or something I want to talk about later. A guy, one of my friends came by and said, uh, and put another bug in my ear about finishing. He said, you know, why do two of them with, uh, with epoxy and uh, fiberglass? Why not uh, try show another method? So I've been thinking about that. 
But right now, we want to get these things joined together. And let me show you. I'm going to, I'm going to use this pair. Let me move this so I don't confuse things. What you want to do is stay away from the outside edge. You don't want to get glue out here anywhere near this outside edge if you can possibly help it because it's a real pain in the butt to sand later. And these segments, of course, are going to have to be sanded. So in order for us to stick our pair together, what we need to do, it hardly matters about broad areas like this on the inside. That doesn't matter. What you don't want to do is let this glue leak out to the edge. Now hopefully with this color on it, I'll be able to uh, show you what I mean. I'm going to put a, a nice coating here on the inside because like I said, this doesn't really matter. We're not going to be cutting through that or anything else. But as you go around the edges, keep well inside the cut. Now I'm not going to go way up high in the canopy area, but let me see if you can see this. Uh, hopefully that'll focus for you. What I'm trying to do is keep all of the adhesive out here near the then in the inner edge, not the outer edge, the inner edge. You don't need a, a lot. Like I said, you want them to bond together, of course, but the ultimate strength of the model is going to come from the covering. Now let me show you one more time. Let's see if I can get that. I hope you can see that. We're well in from the outside edge. It really doesn't matter if a little bit of this squirts out on the inside because, again, that part does not matter. Now, we've got F7 to F7, and here is where those alignment marks become critical. You absolutely have to have these things aligned if you want to have a true fuselage. Keep going around. The good thing about this glue is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't set up that quickly, so you've got some time to move things. And it's an air dry glue, so these being captured in the foam, uh, I'll let these dry overnight and then do two more pair tomorrow or maybe later this evening. It just depends. But right now, I'm going to show you the alignment marks. They've got to be aligned just that accurately. They have to be aligned perfectly. Uh, we don't want any bananas. Okay? Now we've got F6, 7, and 8 faces here with F7s joined together. And now I'm looking one last time around. I'm going to move that just a tad on the bottom. But there's the bottom aligned. That one is aligned. They're all aligned now. And what I do to let these set up, I've got some weights that I cast. You can use different things, but I just use these lead weights that I cast. And I'll set that on there and let that dry. And again, that glue will be, it'll be able to be handled uh, in just a few hours, actually. But I'll leave it overnight, just to, uh, just to be sure. Then I'll take two more segments, join them until we've got pairs joined up. And then, of course, you join the pairs. Now, 
before you complete the tail segments, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get a control linkage back to the elevator or elevator and rudder if you're doing a, uh, a rudder job. This is going to have a fixed rudder and going to be just a little yank and bank belly slider. So if you're going to go further along with yours with landing gear and steerable tail wheel and that sort of thing, you've got to start figuring out how you're going to get that back here. Now I like wire inside a plastic tube and I'll show you what I use when, uh, when I get to that part here. Um, you can buy Sullivan golden rods and things like that for lots of, lots of money, more, more than they're, I think that they're actually worth. But you can also go on uh, Amazon and get bicycle cable guide, about 10 miles of it for the same price that you would for a few meters of golden rod. So it's very cheap. It's you, it's, I'll show you the stuff when I get to it. But this is what you do, pair by pair by pair. And now I've got this stuff all over me. But keep it on the inside. Keep No matter whether you use Yoohoo, whether you use Titebond Original or Titebond Translucent, whatever you do, try to keep it on the inside. If some gets out on the outside edge, that's OK. Uh, you can deal with it later, but having to deal with it later is a pain in the ass. Dealing with it right now makes it easy. Okay? All right. So after I start getting some of these segments done and we start thinking about routing stuff, I'll be back. Okay, everyone. Just a, a quick shot to show the initial glue up now. All of those are pairs that are all set and drying. They're not in any particular order right now, but uh, just sitting there, they'll dry up, and then I'll start putting those together. And when we start working back near uh, aft of the wing, we will also start putting in a guide rod, actually a guide tube, to go back to the elevator. Now you can put, of course, uh, whatever you want in there, whatever sort of guidance system you like. Some people like carbon push rods. I like wire running in a tube. Uh, you know, whatever uh, you've become used to, uh, to rigging will work just fine. And back once more. Uh, I mentioned that I like to use wire inside uh, a plastic tube. Now there or model aircraft plastic tubes available everywhere, but most of the time they're quite expensive. This stuff, uh, man, I've even hadn't even started using this. It's about a long, a long, long roll of it. Uh, what it is is bike cable guide tubing, and it's available on Amazon for cheap. The um, I don't even know how much I paid for this, but it was a, an amazingly low price. And Amazon is not even the cheapest place around. But anyway, this stuff is just slick as grease on the inside, and it runs and handles wire tubing very well as a guide. Now the wire I use, again, I use fishing leader. Let me hold this up. This is about 0.86 millimeters. It's um, 240 pound test. Let me hold this up there. Uh, I guess that will focus. I hope it does. Let's put it right about there. There we go. Okay. It works fine. It's plenty stiff enough enclosed in the cable. And the exterior runs are extremely short so it won't kink up or bend on you. Now the only thing about running a tube down the, uh, the length of the fuselage of course is that you've got to secure it along its length in there. Now I'll just cut off a random length here, something that will hang out. Um, looking at uh, my SketchUp drawing, it looks like the tube should exit. Let me take this apart now. 
I started, of course, doing segments in pairs, but I left it so that I could access the after portion of the fuselage just to be able to mount this tubing. So you need to determine on yours whether you're going to run this above or below the crossbar that we put in, uh, or where, wherever you put your crossbar. Uh, I've determined that the cutout for the uh, horizontal stab will allow me to bring this out at about OF12, which is right about here, and it will be on top of the crossbar that I put in when I drew it up in CAD. So this will be mounted in here. I'll use, you can use anything. I mean, this is foam. You can take a bamboo skewer and stick it in there and just get you an angled cut so that the uh, tubing comes out at a nice angle. No severe bends. That's the bane of having a, a wire run inside a tube is you can't get really severe bends in it. So we'll have it come out at a nice angle. And then we're going to have to attach it inside here so that it's held down because you can't just let this stuff run wild in there. The wire will bend it all over the place and controls, uh, it just won't work. So you've got to attach this down and that's why we left these segments so that we could still get to the inside of them. All right, so I'll try mounting this and getting back. But it's beginning to look like, once I, uh, once I put them on there right, see if I can hold this together. Yeah, it's beginning to look like we might have a zero in here somewhere after all. Now again, it doesn't look like much now because of all the dings in the foam but those will sand out super fast. You'll be amazed at how quickly these fuselages come down uh, to uh, a very smooth finish. And then we'll also discuss the filler that's gonna to have to be used to get it to be absolutely smooth before we coat it. We're, and <laughs> I guess you, uh, you've noticed by now, we've got two of the EPS fuselages here along with the XPS. At this point in time, uh, because I'm not absolutely crazy, I'm going to drop the discussion of the XPS out because I want to discuss two different means of, uh, of covering the model. And if, uh, had that on backwards, there we go. I want to discuss two different ways of covering the model. One will be with fiberglass and resin, which is the way I prefer. It'll be uh, a make, well three quarter ounce fiberglass and epoxy resin. That's that's my standard on here. But I had a friend ask about paper covering, and that's sort of a a, a decoupage paper mache type shell, and it's quite strong too. A lot of people in RC groups use that method and swear by it. There's a ton of discussions on there about covering with paper. So rather than having two uh, covered with the same material, uh, I thought it might be interesting to some people to have two covered with two different materials. And along the way, I'll learn something too because I want to see the weight difference. So it really wouldn't do for me to cover the EPS in fiberglass and the XPS in paper because I wouldn't tell, I, I wouldn't be able to tell a relative weight. This way I've got two EPS fuselages to work on, so I'll be able to tell you exact weight differences. Okay, well, enough talking. This is going to end this particular episode, but we'll be back. Let's see, I think I have made my I think maybe I uh, maybe I got rid of it. No, damn, here's the list. Okay, when I get back, we'll talk about sanding these things to shape. 
we still have the fuselage cutouts to do, and then we'll talk about uh, the wing. Thank you for sticking around this long.